Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Urcioli with you. Match in review. Forge FC can now focus uh, strictly on domestic play and qualifying for uh, CONCACAF Champions League as they are out of the Canadian Championship Tournament. They made it to the semifinal, but could not get past CF Montreal for a third time now. This match, a 2-0 final for Montreal. A tale of two halves, really. The first half, um, it looked like coming into this match, and I spoke about it during the match day preview, uh, during the three keys as well. There was an opening here that Forge would get opportunities in this match, and they had to capitalize on them. Ultimately, um, they didn't. Montreal did. Um, and even they missed a, a few chances. But the second half is where Montreal kind of took over and it forced Forge out of their, their kind of game plan. And uh, they just didn't look quite right. But up until Montreal struck first, the game was there. I mean, the game was there for the taking. Forge came out with, um, I would say there, I, I looked at the starting lineup and I said, this is Bobby Smirniot is putting out his most veteran squad. Uh, you had Borges, Schwanier, Pasillas up top, uh, Becker, Sissoko, Hojab Rapport in the middle, and then Ashton Morgan, Mandrakar James, uh, Ashton Yodi Janssen, and Rama on the back line with Tristan Henry in goal. So they went with experience uh, for the most part. And um, a lineup that did a lot of damage for them last season, especially when you see Ashton Yodi Janssen back at center back. Uh, you see Borges, Basia, Schwanier up top. This is a lineup was reminiscent of um, the lineup we saw frequently and consistently last season. By the way, first time that the Schwanier brothers have gone uh, head-to-head in uh, their respective starting lineups. So a special moment for them. But first thing you noticed right out the gate, um, Forge wasn't messing around. They had learned their lesson from last season in Montreal, which was a loss. Uh, but the first half, one of the worst halves of football this club has ever played in the last, what, four plus years. Um, they came out the gate ready. They played physical, took some tactical fouls. They kind of, uh, you know, let Montreal know. Like, hey, you know, this is it's not going to be easy. We're going to make you work for every inch. And... Um, you know, Hojab Rapport was just a just a force of nature in that defensive midfield spot that he plays in, making sure that, you know, Montreal knew that he was around. He played physical. He played with his body. Um, and he played hard. And a lot of the guys did. Uh, Rama. I will talk about Rama in a bit because I got some notes on him. But, you know, Montreal came out. They came out aggressive with that high press. But Forge, they didn't panic. Very comfortable dominated possession in the first 10 minutes or so. So again, it was some early signs that this was not going to be a repeat of last year, regardless of the result. The effort was not going to be a repeat of last year, and it wasn't. They learned their lessons from last year. That's what you want to see in your lineup, especially from your veteran guys. Um, so again, there, there, was, uh, there were opportunities in that, in that first half. Montreal played in that uh, Christmas tree-like formation with the the three center backs. And then, um, I mean, picture a Christmas tree. And that's how the formation looks. So there was some space wide um, in that in, in that final third with Montreal playing with three center backs and uh, their, the, with those wide midfielders not necessarily being able to trace back and track back as much as they wanted to. So there, there was some space. There were some openings for Borges and Schwanier, and both players looked different, uh, looked uh, dangerous at different times. Forge, by the way, aggressive in their own right in their high press. So again, this was not a club playing scared to lose. Forge came; they were playing to win, and it showed, uh, particularly in that in that first half. We do have to talk about Tristan Borges and the evolution of his game. Prolific scorer in this league has really rounded out his game and and can contribute in so many different ways now. I mean, his ability to track back, 
His defensive work rate, he broke up a couple of plays, helping out the fullbacks. Uh, Borges played up and down, and um, yeah, the work rate w- was there. I mean, Borges is a guy that, he and he's talked about this. You know, he's talked to us about this, about evolving his game and growing it and getting better, being being a guy that, that can contribute in multiple ways. And Borges has really rounded out his game, uh, and it showed in this match against Montreal. Montreal had a very specific game plan on the attack. They're going to overload the middle of the field and try to outnumber Forge and try to overwhelm Forge in the middle, bringing in extra guys. They only played with two guys out wide, uh, but really everything was funneled into the middle of the field. And um, Forge responded. They defended really well. Not just, they were, they, they defended they were disciplined. You know, they didn't chase. They didn't get uncomfortable because don't forget, this is a club that is not used to defending for long periods of time. They're so used to having possession, so used to being on the front foot. Uh, but they knew in this one, it was going to be a different challenge. They were going to have to put the work in defensively in order to come out uh, with a victory in this one. And uh, they put the work in defensively, very organized, very disciplined. Uh, and Montreal had nothing. In that first half, I mean, just nothing, nothing dangerous, a couple of attempts, but nothing, n- no, um, you know, no legitimate threat for Montreal in that first half. So full marks to Forge FC for showing up and uh, making a statement early and defending well, something they might not be so comfortable doing because they're just, they're, they're a club that's used to having the ball. Listen. Teams like Forge, they don't like defending. It's uncomfortable because uh, for obvious reasons, they want the ball uh, because that's just the kind of team they are and that's the way they play. So out of their comfort zone a little bit and they responded. Those are good signs if you're Bobby Smirniotis and the Forge coaching staff. Uh, David Chouanier, big game, Dave. Uh, Noticeable throughout. Um, And I'm going to keep emphasizing the first half because it really was a tale of two halves. Um, so many opportunities. There was a run that he made. He must have ran 30 to 40 yards, um, almost untouched. He blew by a few Montreal players. He set up Pasias, who was uh, just outside the area, and uh, Pasias couldn't hit the target. But, uh, yeah, Chouanier's pace on full display and his skill with, you know, of course, his mother in the audience watching her two sons. Something to prove there for Dave. Um Montreal looked uncomfortable in that first half various times. They didn't look comfortable defending. A lot of giveaways, a lot of uh, clears that uh, kind of panic clears, kicking the ball, uh, kicking the ball out when there were plays to be made. So there was some panic there. Again, Ford, there were some openings. This has been an emphasis this year that quality final touch, that clinical finish. Forge has, has not had it. Um, and it kind of reared its ugly head in this one because, there again, there were some opportunities. You know, Pasillas was with an opportunity, uh, m- missing the target after Schwanier's run. So th- this is something that the club wants to clean up and something that can be worked on. I mean, listen, they're, they're in first place in, in the Premier League table, so certainly nothing to be overly concerned about. Um, but I think it showed in this match against Montreal that th- they are lacking that that final touch, that final quality touch. And um, yeah, I mentioned that I have more to say on Rama. I just, if you're a young player, if you're a parent with with a young with with, with a child who plays soccer at any level, and you want to teach them how to defend and how to tackle, I mean, textbook tackling, just show them Rosart Rama. Go back, replay this game against Montreal. At least two in quick succession. Unbelievable tackles that, you know when they're so clean and so good that it almost like, you're almost expecting a foul to be called. You're like, that was almost too perfect of a tackle. There's no way it was that clean. Uh, But they were. They were unbelievable. And those tackles created offense the other way and forwards were able to counter after uh, those tackles from Rama. So you cannot get any better than Razar Rama in the uh, in the tackling game. So young players, uh, go go back, go back and, and watch. So that was the first half. You know, Forge they, they challenged Montreal to to break them down. 
if Montreal was going to attack in the middle of the field like they wanted to, in the first half, Forge made a statement. You're going to have to break us down. We're not going to give you anything easy. And again, it showed. Now, neither club hit the target in that first half, which it's good news for the away team, right? If you're Forge and you're going into half, you have to be looking at this as an, just a, an amazing opportunity going into the second half. It's 0-0. Montreal hasn't had a shot on target. They've looked uncomfortable defending. Um, the way they're trying to attack isn't working because you're playing so well, so organized defensively. And Montreal became overly reliant on their crosses because there was nothing in the middle of the field and uh, not really no danger to speak of until the 54th minute. Terrible luck. And sometimes... This is what it comes down to. Terrible luck for Forge. Lasseter, a weak shot that deflected off a Forge player and went into the back of the goal, changed directions on Tristan Henry, who played an incredible game himself. So the 54th minute, Montreal got the opening goal, and it the game just changed after that, which is expected. Forge now have to attack. Um, Montreal... Had some more opportunities after that. The game kind of opened up because Forge was getting a little anxious. Um, they, they wanted the equalizer. A minute later, a minute later, Forge maybe a little rattled after that goal. Montreal within. You cannot ask for a better opportunity from about seven yards out, sailed over the goal. So perhaps luck on Forge's side, at least in that moment, after getting some bad luck on that opener. So possibly a, a lifeline being handed to forge after that miss uh, brutal miss from Montreal. And uh, I have your 69th minute around the 69th minute. Tristan Henry made one of the most casual, calm, spectacular saves I've ever seen. There was a scramble in front of the forge goal. Henry was actually standing behind like inside of his goal. So he was behind the goal line, but a shot came and he reached, extended his hand beyond the goal line to punch the ball out. It was in a, if you go back and watch it, if you're looking at the final, the two nothing final and saying, I don't want to watch these highlights. I suggest you go back and watch. If anything, if for nothing else, for this save only, one of the most remarkable saves you will ever see uh, and then 78th minute, Montreal with the insurance marker. Ibrahim, Forge fans will be very familiar with Ibrahim. Uh, he had a hat trick in the matchup between these two clubs last year. So the stat line, ball possession at 57% for Montreal. Again, um, a little misleading because it uh, most of that uh, came in the in the second half. At least the quality ball possession, most of that came in the, in the second half. For the first 10 to 15 minutes, um, Forge looked like Forge. And then they had some opportunities to at least uh, take some shots and get into some high danger areas. Could not capitalize. And the window, the, the window of opportunity kind of closed on them there. Um, you know, even attack, the total attacks, the number of attacks, 68 Montreal, 67 for four. So you see the score is a little deceiving at 2-0. At so in the second half, I will note uh, Forge, they made all like they have done. This will be now every match Forge have played this season, domestically and the Canadian Championship they have used all five of their subs uh, using their lineup. So Hamilton came in for Pasias, Campbell came in for Borges, uh, Matusala for Hoshab Rapport, Jensen came in for Becker, and Dominic Samuel came in for Ashton Morgan. So, um, you know, Forge had some different, some fresh legs out there hoping to turn the tide a little bit, but uh, it didn't go their way. Listen, it is what it is. That's your final. End of the day, Forge maybe deserved a little more. But um, the home side comes out on top, and they are headed now to the Canadian Championship final. All right, that's going to do it for us. Your final once again, Montreal 2, Forge nothing. 
in the Canadian Championship semifinal. Montreal off to the final now. And Forge will have a league play to focus on. They're in first place. Nothing to hang their heads about after this one. They get back to business, get back to work. Saturday, a rematch of last year's CPL final, in which Forge won 2-0 against Atletico Ottawa. Saturday, 2 o'clock kickoff. And uh, we will have the game, the uh, match day preview for you coming up very shortly. Make sure you subscribe to the Forge Audio Network, however you get your Forge content. Maybe it's on YouTube. Maybe you just like listening because you don't want to look at me. That is so understandable. I can't even begin to to explain. Um, you're the smart ones, the, the ones who are listening only. And on all the Forge social media channels. Listen, you, you, can't, you can't avoid us. We're, we're everywhere. So make sure you listen. Match day preview coming up. Also the three keys to the match because Ottawa is up next on Forge's schedule. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.